Well, a new year often comes with new resolutions. And this is true especially when it comes to growing your finances. And the ever-expanding world of investment is ripe with opportunities. Joining us now to walk us through the various types of investments to consider in 2023 is Brendan Caldwell, director at Caldwell Securities Limited. Brendan, welcome back. Thank you, Nima. Happy New Year yet again. Happy New Year. Now, what kind of financial resolutions should investors make for 2023? Depends on the investor. But I think in general terms, uh, pay down debt, cap the interest rate on your debt, and squirrel some money away. I think in those, really those three things. So to the extent that you have the ability to get debt paid down, uh, I would think it's a real priority. To the extent that you have floating rate debt, I would see about capping it. I do think interest rates are going to go higher. And then lastly, what even if you're doing it just a small amount every month, even if it's just 50 bucks or 100 bucks a month, do be putting some money away. Do be putting some money. I could have phrased that better, but uh, put some money away on a monthly basis just so you're, you're building a bit of a reserve on the side. All right, Brendan. Uh, now, for people who might be new to investments, there are a lot of different accounts to consider. So could you walk us through what they are and why they're important? Wow. Okay. So yes, there are a lot of ways in Canada, particularly, to, uh, to do that squirreling of money away. And each has its own time and, and place. So in the old days before that whole alphabet of different accounts, RSPs, TFSAs, uh, RESPs, there was just an investment account. And this is the simplest and most straightforward way, just putting money in. There's no tax, anything about it uh, in terms of advantage to putting it in or taking it out. And yes, it is taxable while you're there, but if you're just starting out, the tax consequences, generally speaking, are not that big a deal, whether it's dividends or capital gains. Now, that's the most people, though, seem to talk about RSPs around this time of year because there's a weird quirk in Canada that you can contribute money to your registered retirement savings plan, your RRSP, for the previous year up to the first two months of the following year. So you can contribute and get a tax deduction on your RSP contribution in 2023 against your 2022 taxes. Um, and this is why people get confused. So people are talking about it now, and I think it's worth making an RSP contribution for people who are looking to either put money aside for retirement or people looking to save for a house, uh, because there are ways that you can use your RSP in what's called the um, home buyer's plan to actually take money out of that for a house. So RSPs are a way of getting started, as is our straight up investment accounts. But there are others as well, and we can talk about that if we have time. Some helpful advice there, Brendan. Now, on the topic of RRSP accounts, uh, some people might qualify to change their RRSPs into an RRIF account. So can you tell us a little bit about that and when people should consider making that change? Okay. Now, uh, RRIF, I see this whole alphabet, Registered Retirement Income Fund. Um, RSPs were originally designed to re for people in the private sector who weren't part of big corporations or governments to stand instead of a pension. And a RIF, an RRIF, uh, was a way of paying out that pension um, as, as opposed to buying a life insurance annuity or some other product. So when you turn 71, you actually have to turn your, your retirement savings plan into a vehicle that will actually start paying you out some of that money. Because you get a tax deduction for putting money into an RSP, the government wants to get that tax back eventually. So the money you take out of an, uh, a RIF, an RF, um, the first 2000, uh, there are ways that if that can be tax exempt, but everything above that is, is actually taxable. The theory, the theory is that when you're in your earning years, you're making more money and are taxed at a higher rate. And once you're retired, you're taxed at a lower rate because you're not making quite as much money. So the idea is this RIF, this RIF, is a vehicle to allow people to start taking out money. You have to start taking it out at 72, but some might want to do that earlier. Um, it's much the same question like with a uh, your Canada pension plan, your CPP, whether you take it early or the regular time or later. It really depends on what your cash flow needs are expected to be both now and in the future. All right, Brendan, always helpful advice. It looks like we just have about 10 seconds left here, but if you could leave us with one message for investors in 2023, what would it be? 
the best thing for the vast majority of people, particularly young people, is to do some sort of regular contribution plan. Because if you don't have money, you have something that's even better, and that is time. And if you have, if you take advantage of time, the volatility, the ups and downs, all that you hear in the newspapers and on the TV don't mean anything because it get, you have time if you're putting money away a little bit at a time to, to build wealth. So that would be my one bit of advice for 2023. All right, Brendan, thank you for your time today. Thank you.